Um, hi, my name is Zing. I'm a journalist, the editor of Broadly UK, and I'm also the author of a new book series called Forgotten Women. That's, that's, <laughs> um, that's so nice. Uh, thank you so much, Zing, for agreeing to do this. Um, how important do you think female mentors are when it comes to encouraging women uh, to engage within STEM, uh, both in, in education and, of course, in, in business, essentially? I think it's so important to have a female mentor. Um, I know you yourself has, have a yeah. female mentor. Yeah, that's right. um, and you know, there's something about being able to talk to someone who you know is on your level, who shares the same kind of background as you, that's really valuable. Because if you don't see yourself in the kind of companies or in the kind of industries that you want to be in, then you're going to feel discouraged and you're going to feel put off. You're going to start wondering, is this place really for me? Should I try fighting this fight? Because I know it's going to be tough, it's going to be difficult. Um, maybe I should just, you know, throw in the towel. And that's not something that should be, you know, dismissed. I feel like that's a really understandable response when you look somewhere and you don't see a place for yourself. So, you know, um, like for example, with your mentor, like, can you tell me a bit about how, you know, she's encouraged you and yes. what she's done for you? I mean, I can definitely vouch for everything that you said. Um, my mentor's been incredible. Uh, she's essentially where I want to be. Um, so her past is essentially my future. Um, so. For me personally, having someone to look up to who, not, who was in a class, for example, like myself, that was male dominated, uh, went ahead, got into a company like Amazon, um, and explained to me the process from, from where she started to where she is, and how, as a company, Amazon, for example, has helped her. It, it, it allows me to kind of dream, it allows me to be like, well, actually, no, I can, I can do it, essentially. Um, you know, I can apply my degree, or I can be myself, and, and doesn't, it does not matter, I guess, you know, who, what, like what your ethnicity is, your gender, your religion. It doesn't. It does not matter um, who you are. So you can, you can do it. And having obviously someone to look up to uh, has helped me a great deal. So definitely, hundred percent agree with what you said. Thank you so much, Singh. Um, and do you think programs like bursaries and quotas uh, for women in business are important? I think that, you know, and I know that some people really kind of resist the idea of bursaries, especially quarters as well, because they think it's somehow, you know, quote unquote unfair in some way. And I think, but I think that these things are really important because what you're making up for is, you know, like we talked earlier, like what you're doing is making up for historical lack of women in ethnic minorities in certain industries, you know, so you're up against like hundreds of years of history of people being barred from the very industry that you're trying to improve. So when you look at something like a quota, you look at something like a bursary, um, you're not actually disadvantaging people, you're offering disadvantaged people the opportunity, the same opportunity that other people have gotten for all their lives. So I think that's why they're really important. Absolutely, I mean it's a form of incentive. Exactly. You know, essentially, so no, I, I totally agree with you there. Um, do you have any advice uh, for female leaders, hopefully you one day, <laughs> and scientists um, at Amazon on securing a positive, uh, lasting legacy for themselves? I feel like people like you are doing a great job already, <coughs> just by like stepping up, um, being visible, talking, being on panels, you know, going out and meeting people, that's really valuable in and of itself. I guess my advice is, you know, don't expect things to start changing overnight. Um, I think there's a kind of like, instant gratification society that we live in, where we think, okay, we've applied our best efforts and our greatest minds to this problem. It's not being fixed by next Tuesday, let's just give up. And you know, that's just not how progress works, really. Um, so many of the women in my books are fighting for things like the abolition of slavery, for you know, votes for women. The, and these women you know, were fighting for years and years. They died without ever seeing the full combination of their efforts. But the very fact that they were contributing to it was you know, enough for them. You know, they knew that they weren't going to see change in their time, that it was important to them to contribute in their own way. And I think that's what we all need to bear in mind. You know, change is slow and incremental. Occasionally, it can be really tough and difficult, but you have to just be bloody minded at it and stick to it. Because you, know, you might not be achieving, achieving change in your own generation, but you, know, you might be achieving change for your daughters or your granddaughters. And in that way, it is valuable. Hi, I'm